How am I ever supposed to teach this? I don't even understand it myself. I say unto you, can you imagine to yourselves that ye hear the voice of the Lord saying unto you in that day, come unto me, ye blessed. Come unto me. Why do teachers ask students to teach lessons? Teachers are supposed to teach, teach, er. Students are supposed to do whatever they want. I never have any choices. No, thanks. You can keep it. Whatever happened to free agency? I never have any choices. What are you doing? Well, I thought that maybe you could help me out with something. So why are you throwing your jacket around like that? That's what I was doing the first time you came. I couldn't think of anything else to do to get you back. Anyway, I'm supposed to teach part of our priesthood lesson. And I was wondering if you had any ideas. Go on. Well, give me that. There's a scripture that asks us to imagine that we've died and that we've come to stand before the Lord. I just, I'm having a hard time with it. It says, Do you look forward with, with an eye, eye of faith and, and view this mortal body raised in immortality and this corruption raised in incorruption to stand before God to be judged according to the deeds which have been done in this mortal body? I read it too. So how can I help you? <sighs> well, I was wondering if you could use, um, some of your special effects to show me what it would be like. Like we went for riding the Ferrari. Those aren't my special effects. It's your imagination. Look, can you imagine being brought forth to stand before God? That's just it. I just have a hard time visualizing it. I just can't picture what things look like there. It's not the point. The important thing about returning to God isn't what you're going to be able to see. How you feel. How comfortable you are in his presence. Look, this won't be anywhere near the same thing. But let's use our imagination. See if we can get a similar feeling. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yeah, sure. Just as simple I do will do. I do. Would you take the stand, please? What's going on here? This is a court of law. We're conducting a hearing. We are trying to determine how you feel when you have to stand before the Lord and account for yourself. Well, who decided you should be the prosecutor? I was appointed by the court. Wait a minute. Who decided you should be every character in the courthouse? Alma did. Alma? Yes, Alma. Alma formulated a series of questions that people could ask themselves in order to determine the readiness to return to God. We're here to ask these same questions. Do we have a problem with that? No. We don't have a problem with that. It's just... Well, who's here to defend me? Whom would you like? Me. I'll defend myself. Excellent choice. 
Are you ready to proceed? Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Mike, when you stand up the judgment, can you imagine you hear the voice of the Lord saying, Come unto me, ye blessed. Your works have been works of righteousness. Well, it's a tough one. I don't think I'm bad or wicked, but I know I'm not perfect. Just answer the question, please, yes or no. What is this? Is he trying to put me on a guilt trip or what? Your point is well taken. Mr. Prosecutor, the purpose of this hearing is not so much to establish guilt as much as it is to teach the individual about himself. Will you please rephrase the question? Thank you, Your Honor. Let me be a little more specific. Can you look up to God at that day with a pure heart and clean hands? I admit that unclean thoughts have been on my mind sometimes. But I usually sing a hymn or something to get them out. What about on the day of March 12th, when you were reading a book for English? Do you remember the graphic descriptions of immoral behavior? Did you sing a hymn or something on that day? I was required to read that book. Just answer the question, yes or no. Do you remember the descriptions? OK. So I struggled with that part. I finally just skipped it. And in the day since, has that thought returned to your mind? You know it has. You're me. How will you feel, Mike, when you have to stand before the bar of God if that thought is still on your mind? I feel rotten. That's how I feel. How will you feel, Mr. Prosecutor? What do you mean? I mean just that. There's not a you or a me. There's only an us. The question you should have asked is, how will we feel? Your Honor, this is highly irregular. I do not find it irregular in the least bit. The purpose of this hearing is not to pit us against ourselves. It is to get us to honestly ask those questions. Mike, would you please step down? Mr. Prosecutor, would you please take the stand? Your Honor, I object! Objection overruled. Are we comfortable? Mr. Prosecutor, please answer the question. May I have the question again, please? How will you... Excuse me. The question should be, how will we feel when we have to stand before the Lord with those thoughts still on our mind? Actually, I wouldn't be sad if we never found out. I'd just as soon we clean up our act before we returned. It's okay by me. Any further questions? How do we propose that we clean up our act? That's why we were asking those questions from Alma 5. Wait a second. So where were we? The last question we asked ourselves was from verse 22. It says, Behold, will they not testify that ye are murderers? Murderers? What has that got to do with anything? Not all the questions apply to us. Skip down to the one that talks about a change of heart. And now behold, I say unto you, my brethren, if ye have experienced a change of heart, a really good question. Have we experienced a change of heart? We're doing a lot better than I sometimes let on. Remember that time when we were riding our bike and we saw what looked like a pornographic magazine on the side of the road? Yeah. You told me to just keep on riding. Is that what a change of heart is? I think that's part of it. 
Remember, one of the things we learn in Mosiah is that when we receive a change of heart, we no longer have a desire to sin. But we were really tempted. We were tempted. But we didn't give in. Being tempted by sin isn't the same thing as wanting to sin. We didn't want to sin because our heart is changing. Excuse me, gentlemen. This is a court of law. We're conducting a hearing. This is not a discussion. But your honor, the defendant and I were beginning to make some real headway in this case. That's what I was thinking. It is the ruling of the court, therefore, that the defendant and the prosecutor be encouraged to continue their conversation on their own time and at a place of their own choosing. This court is adjourned. Whoa, that was a really great session. I haven't had that much fun since second e fight too. Yeah, but did you feel it? Feel what? Feel what it would be like to have to stand before the Lord and account for our life. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine living your whole life so that you are prepared to go before the Lord any time? Did you say, imagine? <laughs>